Okay, hi everyone. So welcome to a quasi-special edition of Radio Gunk. What we're doing tonight is uh, actually discovered this amazing little Howard Stern documentary called The Move to Satellite Radio. I think that's what it's called. I can only see the dots on top right now. And uh, so what we're going to do for you tonight is do a special recording of this incredible documentary that none of us have seen. Uh, so we're going to kind of do a walkthrough of Howard's first days of stock manipulation and multi-millionaires <laughs> and, and how it all came to be and how we, amongst the many, were ridiculous sycophants to his behavior. And although we hated the fact that he talked about Sirius Satellite for 14 months before he left, this actually gives us the culmination of his leaving uh, WXRK 92.3 K-Rock and moving over to Satellite Radio. Um, Dennis, have you seen this? This... Um Probably not. Okay, um, me neither. No. I know, and I know that Benjamin was like, "Oh my God, this is so good. We need to save it so that we can totally and organically be able to walk through the show that was yeah. Howard at the." I watched one minute of it. I watched two minutes, and that was only because of testing. Not, but um, if I have seen it, it was more than twelve years ago. Is the actual name of this documentary "The Move to Satellite"? <laughs> 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 okay. All right. So we are starting this Howard Stern documentary. Has arrived. I do believe in satellite. I think satellite is the future of radio. This is like no big master plan. It just seemed kind of cool to go hand out radios. And now. Oh, that's what we're know, doing. Now handing all out of radios. Like Turning into a big deal, but it's not a big deal. <laughs> and then. Uh, <laughs> And then the Letterman thing was just like, no, the master hey, plan is to get a $220 million bonus. Right exactly. Satellite and sort of tell people, why don't you get hooked? Yeah, my message is to get hooked up with satellite now, even though we're not there yet, because that way you get it. Wait, where are we now? What time period are we at? I would say November of 2004. And realize that what he's saying is, why don't you just go ahead and sign up now, even though my show isn't there for another year? That way you have it. That's oh. like saying... Why don't you go ahead and buy tickets to any movie that's playing in the theater? Private parts will be there in a year. You'll have a good seat. Just keep <laughs> <No>. going. <laughs> Xavier's going to kill me. I actually wasn't recording. <laughs> 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 We're recording. It's just the visual of it is is hey, uh, a hey, little fun. Don't up. don't don't feel bad. Wiggy's been on the radio for over forty years. He still is not to work anything. It's okay. <laughs> exactly. Monique one eighty <laughs> is what we're doing right now. So apologies, everybody. Okay, wait. Okay, so yes, let's talk about this whole stock thing. Actually, I just reached out to Chauncey Hayden again because remember he was all caught up in that whole stock. Uh, manipulation mm -hmm. thing, right. how he manipulated that stock. Because exactly what Benjamin said is true. Basically what happened is here he is you know, hyping this place, talking about it, going absolutely batshit about it, mm -hmm. knowing fully well. And you know, listen, I'm, I'm part of the lemmings. I, I confess completely that I was one of those people who you know, was completely uh, sold by, by doing this for him. Yeah. And the date of this event is November 18th, 2004. Oh, so wow. it's more Shit. than a year before he goes on. Oh wow. my god, I forgot that he had such stones on him. Yeah. yeah. So this was all building up to a massive bonus. Yeah. Okay. All right, here we go. And the Letterman thing was just like, "Hey, I should go to some show and speak about what's going on right now with satellite and sort of tell people, why don't you get hooked? Yeah, my message is to get hooked up with satellite now." Even though we're not there yet, because that way you I get it in your back. car, you get it at home, and you're hooked up for the first show. And I, I makes I no sense. No. Get it a year in advance. That way you have it in your car. I think this will be the biggest show we ever did. You're not Hi, getting it for free. Scores. You're paying Howard, every single day for a year, and you're paying for the All right. All right. But there was no master plan, yet he had all these big operas waiting there. Right. So, what's this idiot's name? Awesome Angela. Oh, Angela. Awesome Angela. Wasn't that Beth's like best uh, friend double, for like a minute? Isn't it a double felony? <laughs> <laughs> But meanwhile, look at the crowds that he used to garner. Does anybody recall that last Letterman that he was on where there were like five <laughs> people outside and Baba Booey? 
Do you remember that? Like from about people, three years ago? Yeah. 12 people. 12 people, Marianne and like, and, and uh, Gary. That's all the well, outside. Well, person. <laughs> Going to and again, he says modestly in the car, there's no master plan. I'm going to King of Rome Radio right now. I love them. He's very handsome. Tall, handsome, and sexy. Wow. What? Seriously, was she not just walking past fucking Brian Park and decided to pick up a sign wow. like a? Like, <laughs> wow. <laughs> seriously, like a Bernie supporter who just like gets past there and gets a fucking <laughs> sign and decides to fucking go in for the fucking protest. Seriously, who is she? Does she listen to Howard? Really? Really? It's a cleaning lady. No idea. Uh, she is like a cleaning lady. <laughs> Okay, nobody's proud of high pitch, Eric. Nobody at all. Just so we wow. know. That was like 200 pounds ago. I, yeah. I'm not even sure he's lost. All right, look at this. So look, look at this crowd. Look at look. It's at, got hundreds of people in this crowd. Thousands. Oh, yeah. I think there's thousands. I, I maybe more. Yeah, I maybe. actually yeah. remember this. I feel like this was at Bryan Park. Yeah, my actually my brother walked by this, and I was I was working maybe yeah. like three blocks away. I remember him coming down in his little like motorcade, and he stopped in a couple of places <laughs> before he got there. Oh, I Shoot love this. Okay. All right, here we go. Yeah, and, and there are. I'm sorry. What banners? There's a giant billboard with Howard Stern. There's yeah, but this um, is very science. very ad hoc. This is very yeah, exactly. Yeah, this is yeah, very it happened, it happened naturally. Yeah. Tons of girls wearing baby dolls. <laughs> Organic. Say yeah. serious on them. All right, here we go. This is a crowd that had no idea. Now are you ready? Oh, look at Artie. Look at oh my God! Look at like thin human. Artie with a nose. Are you ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the greatest radio performer of all time, Howard Stern. Wearing his Puma T-shirt. <laughs> and this is before he actually got fashion, right? This is. This is pre. No, this is not. This is no. This is pre Barbados. This is pre Barbados, though, for sure. Yeah, well, yeah, pre Barbados, right? He was, yeah. he was a Macy's man back then. Exactly. Was John, <laughs> it was post post D Snyder. No, he wasn't a Macy's man. Ralph was a Macy's man. Ralph yeah. had no yeah. fashion Ruby? sense whatsoever. <laughs> hey, now. Here we are all together finally. For coming down here today. This is the dawn of the new beginning. I'm sorry. Can we just, can you just give me this again? What, when was this? November 18th, 2004. Holy and shit. And when did he leave? 1906 was his first. Well, no, no, he left uh, December 20th. Uh, right, he went on vacation for a while. 17th of 2005. It was, it was, it was about Holy... 11, or about 13 months before I, he went up the air. Cannot, <laughs> I cannot. And he's wondering why they sued him. I cannot believe, I cannot believe they let him get away with this. Holy <laughs> shit. All right, I'm moving on. I want to say God bless Sirius Radio. It's the future. It's the reason I'm staying in radio. And I truly believe in this oh, because product. you had any Once other you choice. Start listening to this, you will be addicted. You will love it. Once we can go on the air and truly do our show without FCC interference, right. we will once again have the greatest radio show in history. I promise you that. He looks like I a little fucking I promise you a great dwarfing. radio program for five He's years. A typical He's like a cappuccino five, monkey. <laughs> Followed my career and made all of this possible. I want you to know that the people who got here first, today I'm going to come down there and hand you your radios personally. To get you started. Why did you take off Gary's speakers and he has like this giant fucking hairy feet? I thought it was over for me. And I'm going to tell Wait, you we, something. We're missing it some good so stuff here. Wait, hold on. You're, you're, you're talking over the great stuff here about him being so such a company man. Look at Robin so what Bell's I'm going to do now, I want to do what I promised. <laughs> Look at Fred Lucas. I want to go down to these people here in the front. I want to hand them their radios. I want you to experience radio the way I think it should be. Oh, the future of radio. Sirius Satellite Radio will dominate the medium. It is the death of FM radio, the death of the FCC interference, the death of the FCC. <laughs> that's a, that's a two really patriot cool. talking. Really really Hold on, on. Stop People it. like free stuff. 
Okay. <laughs> Hundreds of people are going, wait, I'm going to watch this man hand out radios? That's it? <laughs> That's literally what this is all about. I'm going to hand out. <laughs> wait, but he only gave them out to the people in the front row, right? Or some shit like yeah. that? Like, what yeah. was going on here? Did, Did you, you ha- see how many total? How many total do you think he gave out that day? A dozen. Oh, uh, that's curious. So maybe we'll find out. Oh, he only had manufactured at the time. He's wearing a change belt. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying about that. I literally am fucking tearing up. I'm laughing so hard at looking at his fucking gigantic feet in that oh, little dwarf well, body. I'm waiting to get a radio myself. These things look cool as hell. Yeah, liar. Stone. Howard's hey, hey, yeah. oh, handing him to Gary, who's handing handing him. <laughs> he's people. like Jesus. Oh, I same one. feel like you free right No. From Howard, it feels like the first time, like the first time. He tells it like it is. Most. <laughs> That's like, she got her Obama fucking phone right now. Like, <laughs> seriously, there's no way that fucking woman listens to Howard. There's just no way. I refuse to believe this. <laughs> Look at these people. Who are these people? I think it. He tells it. Yeah! Oh, so bad. He can't hold me. Radio, and I get to listen to Howard all the time now. And they you don't, don't get to no, listen to Howard for another no, 14 no, months. 13 months. <laughs> and you have to pay for those months. When he switches over, it's so cool. Sal's a fucking asshole. Why? No, we don't have any. What happened? Because you took my radio. You took my radio. Come here, Eric. Come here. You saw it was the next one. Eric. Oh, there's the official uh, photo shoot. Okay. I'm crying at this. It is so fucking funny. I cannot believe I never saw this. Photo shoot, by the way, where they were playing Lose Yourself by Eminem so he could really get into it. And he still looks like a cigar store Indian. amazing how the same fucking people show up for everything he has done for the last like 20 years imagine that <laughs> they're also all holding signs that were made for them of course but it's all it's not like they're natural. Hand- it's not it, like they're handmade signs or anything no no, no, no. hi it's richard christ at the late show with david letterman he's got a big appearance tonight and we're gonna ask him some hard-hitting questions yeah let's do that Here he is. Okay, that was set up. Mr. Stern, what's the hardest thing you've ever had to do? These are Fred's questions. What's the hardest thing I ever had to do? Is Beefus? Yeah. Uh, probably, you know, I don't know. Okay, here's one you have an answer for. On average, how much cum do you ejaculate at once? I don't know, but for a 51 year old guy, I'm pretty virile. I mean, I ejaculated last night to uh, tissue time with Heidi Cortez. Sir. This is my man. He's very, very talented. You would... Thanks, Howard. Look at Beth, always looking for the photo oh, op. This is when she God. still had those dark rings around her eyes like a fucking raccoon in heat. This is like, this is a co-core Beth. Yes. Hopefully we're going to get to talk to him when he comes back out. We got a few fans over here. Let's go talk to the fans. Howard! 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 Here to see the king of all media, Howard Stern, baby. We're here to support him. And Look at he's the hat. He's got the serious hat. January 9th, 06, baby. That's right. They gave out all, all that fucking swag. This. Look, he's got the book. The king is coming. Everybody prepare yeah! for the king. That's right. Revolutionized radio. Yeah. Yeah. We can't wait till you get there, baby. The, the sign is upside down, idiot. Yeah. Howard, you will. Shut the fuck up, you gay fuck. <laughs> what did you do to me last this is night? This press. You can't talk to us like that. What, what did you do to me last night? Oh, last night. What's going on? What did oh. you guys do last night? I really feel like there's only maybe like 12 people there. Just, I'm just throwing it out there. I, I literally, I was like, one, two, three, four. I, I feel like there's like 12 people there. 
for this uh, this amazing display of of, of serious meets Letterman. Oh, you, you, you said you were coming on to him. Yeah, you were coming on to me. What's your name, sir? I'm I'm I I bet you. I bet you, Eric. And what are you known for? I'm known to be on the fucking Howard Stern show. And have your teeth always been that yellow? Yeah, and then, and then you fuck. <laughs> this was the best stuff they had for the documentary. Like wow. Yeah. I just do. Great. But you don't bother cutting your nose hair. Oh, I do. I do all the time. <laughs> you look like you I love you. So that's what the fans have to say. All right, this is Richard Christie. We're waiting outside the Late Show Studios for Howard Stern, who just did his appearance on David Letterman's show. So let's wait for Howard. Wow, this is really exciting, you guys. Mr. Stern, Mr. Stern. Yeah, there you go, how, how did the appearance go? Oh, there's the hoodie. It went there's the hoodie. very well. Uh, I enjoyed speaking to Dave. It was a lot of fun. I promoted Sirius, but I don't think I went too far in, like, being obnoxious about it. I think it went <laughs> He's up. got, like, a colored so what's shirt the biggest challenge underneath his hoodie. Yeah, let's discuss this for a second. So he, wow. he thought he promoted Sirius, but not too much because he didn't want to get in trouble with CBS. But there he is with, you know, a ton of fans outside with pre-made signs with Sirius hats on. I yes. mean, and what does wearing he... a one nine oh six yeah. jacket, a one nine oh six sweatshirt? Right, but he didn't promote it too much. Just, no. just, just enough. Probably that's the toughest thing. But, uh, who Look knows? It. You know, we're gonna find out, aren't we? We're we're all excited about it, Mister okay. Stern. Yes, we are, and we love on demand because the kite. it's gonna be wild. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Stern. So we just talked to Mr. Howard Stern after his very successful David Letterman appearance. This is Mr. Richard Christie signing off. Wow. Yeah, uh, another photo shoot. <laughs> another <fact>. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Team Stacks. Look at that hair. Look wow, that, that hair face. is wow. <laughs> yeah, keep it keep it fast because when everybody talks at him. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> he looks like a wet rat. <laughs> Doesn't he? A little, too much, a little too much Sebastian wet look there. So I just want you to know that my friend from the wow. TV show said, it doesn't sound familiar, but then again, I may have blocked all that shit out, lol. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that, that hair. The hair. Oh. Wait, let me Bill see. Bill O'Reilly. Bill O'Reilly. Oh, he's heading to Bill O'Reilly now? Is, uh, every manufacturer, every manufacturer. He's going to be interviewing me about satellite, you know, and uh, in demand. Yeah, it's Fox, yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 up. I got wet hair, Isaac, so I can't, uh, I gotta get fixed up. I got a washing machine. Bill's pants the devil. This is a rare behind-the-hair shot. I really want to <laughs> He's the Brad Pitt of Fox News. Ah, uh, let's look at this. Tony. Look at this. There's not a single shot of him, of Tony actually, like, getting Watching in it. that hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's just little Jew curls, like... And <laughs> like pace on. Bill O'Reilly, you remember, yeah. notices this, how long it took. Oh, my God. He ripped him. Yeah, totally. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get some. Yeah, get Wait it. a second. I thought you were Puerto Rican. Now you're Indian. Yeah. So I think this is December 8th, 2005 that we're looking at right now. December 8th, 2005. Okay, we're still a still year an away. Still employee of CBS. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. I thought you were Puerto Rican. Now you're Indian. <laughs> yeah, <he knows. laughs> Let me ask you that serious question about government regulation. Who are you asking? You. Me? Yeah. Like he gives you a shit. Wait, first of all, wait a second. Don't hijack Still Bill doing the hair, right? Moment. Yeah. Oh, no. my God. You are, you are really... What do you think I have? One of those, one of those guys <laughs> who are... Who are? So there's Lisa G, which means they had the yeah. news team already yeah. locked up, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, this was, this was my... Um, access to the Howard Stern show was listening on Sirius to the Howard 100 News report on the day's events. They weren't allowed mm. to play any clips of Howard, but because he was off the air in my market, I, I could only listen to Howard 100 News. Okay. Correct. I, I know. Listen about government regulation. Okay, there's Ralph, right, sitting in the back there, or just overlooking. Who are you asking? You. Me? Yeah. You know what, wait, first of all, wait a second. Don't hijack Bill O'Reilly's moment. 
I won't you stay are hours. you are really. What do you think I am? One of those one of those guys <laughs> who are <laughs> more. Why do I take my clothes <laughs> off and go to the bathroom all over myself? Heraldo Lesbians. got. What? A lot of people don't know Geraldo got famous for going to Creedmoor. And he found a bunch of mental patients who were naked and going to the bathroom all over themselves. <laughs> all of and them are now regulars on Howard's program. Yeah, I mean, so this is all a deflection because Howard doesn't feel smart uh, enough to answer the question. O'Reilly, no, of course not. Classic off the cuff. So Geraldo Stern. just walks around with a camera shamelessly, uh, trying to hijack guests. Oh, who's that? Who's that with the camera? <laughs> That's uh, Geraldo's cameraman. Oh, yeah. yeah. Howard, is, uh, Howard is shooting this. And by the way, view. It, be quiet. Where. <laughs> It's it's interesting that we're in the makeup room at large because this is where Geraldo's best work is going on. The guy who walks in, he's got five pounds of makeup. The balls on him. He's got four fucking people doing Indians. his I mean, makeup Native and hair. Native exactly. <laughs> he was the color of Native Americans. At least I don't spend all day curling my hair. I saw Geraldo. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, so, I started so doing a rain dance. Tell, tell us about bringing. You look like making fun of the Native Americans now. This <laughs> this kind of, uh, plug. Look Chief Phony Feathers is sitting there. Phony Feathers. Americans. Getting is, his headdress worked on. And this is clearly before Ralph even got his hands on some fucking Barbados. Look at that outfit. Who's that wow. guy in the background? His hair doesn't look much better either. The guy in the suit. <laughs> All three of them oh, look wow. styled by fucking Tony. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she had one big salad bowl she used. <laughs> she has one hairstyle. We know. Tony's yeah. signature look. <laughs> Does he have decoys? Two decoys in the camera? It would be so funny if we saw a picture of Tony's husband and she had the exact same fucking hair. Yeah. <laughs> and her kids. Her hair salon is just the same photo. Everybody was like, Joe, make me look like Mo. I just don't know what that Tony's fucking kids and Rosie of Zoolander at the end where they all have that hairdo like Zoolander with the like bouffant need, with the fucking spiky hair. This, this needs to be a scrape oh, catcher. Oh, I'm this crying. Is the ever. I am crying. <laughs> Holy shit. Holy shit. You're going to bring censorship to Saturday? <gasps> yeah, I think after I'm done with Satellite, the, yeah. the bottom line is yeah. that um, they, the FCC will come in against all known laws in the no, United they won't. States Constitution and they will regulate Satellite and then I'll leave and retire, <laughs> and that will be my crowning achievement. Go to speak to he just gave an balls. idiotic non-answer. <laughs> All right, oh, yeah. see you, brother. Good luck. I hijacked him because he was hijackable. <laughs> I'm an enterprise reporter. My That's right. That too. To the with That's too. And of course, and the Hamptons. Oh, okay. Hamptons. Right. The guy's 74 years old. You got a one-year-old. Guys, I'm crying about this fucking hair thing. I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> fixated on it. It's like back in the 80s when Eddie well, Murphy was hanging out with Arsenio and they all had. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, I'm out of breath. I'm too tired now to do an interview. I'm doing on demand, I'm doing O'Reilly. Oh my god, so busy. Why don't you put a broom up my ass? You oh, like I'm, that? I'm, I'm, uh, <laughs> <he would>. Off <laughs> the cup stern. <laughs> Always go gay. Okay, I'm rolling. I'm going to tell you what just happened. He's the only guy that I've ever interviewed who's taller than I am. I was okay. just hijacked by O'Reilly. Right, look at this. I mean, no, He's taller I was, than I am. I'm on O'Reilly, but I was hijacked by Geraldo. But here's the smart, here's the thing. He's taller, but not smarter. And we're no, gonna, nobody's not at all. smart as well. No. We're going to demostrate that. All right, all right. come on, let's do it. Good tease? Wait, you got something to do today? Excuse me. I have something to do today. Yeah, That's right, I need to go home and go to sleep, and then I'm taking my daughter. Where are you going? Hamptons? <laughs> not the Hamptons. <laughs> no boo. Remember in the interview, he are. says, these places like no boo, no and Howard boo. goes like, no, you do that too. <laughs> he acts as though he has no idea where you got the notion that I eat at Nobu. Exactly. There you go. Right. Richie Notar was talked about all the time on his show. I mean, come on. Oh, my God. He yeah. promoted Nobu, Nobu because he was getting free fucking meals all the time. Absolutely. All right. Hold on. So now we have Lisa G, who's already working for Howard 100. Yes. Wait, how far in advance were they doing actual programming for the Howard Stern show? Five months, six I, months? Yeah, they were doing... Remember they did the, crapta the craptacular thing where they weighed the bowel movements? Oh, They, right. they did programming now and then. But when I was listening around this time, it was just Howard's, Howard 100 News um, updates all throughout the day repeated. And special shows like they did um, the Super Fan Roundtable hosted by John Hine back then. Yes. How did John Hine get into his vortex? I'm just curious about his history. He was his to go-to guy for TV stuff. Jump the shark. 
That's, uh, that's the only reason. How often was he ever on? I only remember him maybe once or twice. He wasn't by. He was by far not the most frequent of the recurring guests. I mean, he would have like Debbie Schlussel, Schlussel, remember whatever her Schlussel, name is? Yeah, remember Debbie her? Schlussel, she used to call yeah. in a lot. And then, of course, Mr. Skin would call in a lot. I just so you know, per our TV guy, he said, I'm watching some of it now, and I really have no idea who the hell put this together. I know that the rally in the beginning was at Union Square when he spent the afternoon giving out free radios to a limited amount of people. So I just asked who recorded that, and I'm not really sure that he knows. So it was definitely not done by uh, Howard TV guys, just so we know. And it doesn't look it, actually. I mean, really. He probably didn't have the uh, in-demand contract yet. Okay. And I don't know if he could pull the e-guys from their day jobs to do this without having any kind of um, certainty for them. With terriers. Don't you think? All right. Have fun. You I enjoyed it. What'd you think? It was hilarious. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. I think hilarious. Bill was on his game. He was firing away. I liked it. Um, I thought Bill avoided the masturbation question. That that was a tricky one. Uh, I don't understand the, why he wouldn't go. Here. He's got to go. Off the cup uh, but he was a terrific uh, interview and uh, had a good time. He was very, very. No, he was an interviewer. No, he was an interviewer. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Wow, oh, look at this. Oh, we picture. have another photo shoot. <laughs> Bill O'Reilly ripped him a new asshole. He was, it was very he much. He was punch a, drunk when he left. Yeah. He, yeah, he, yeah of course. Sort of, what's so bad is you see his eyes moving around behind those fucking glasses, man. He didn't know what the hell was happening. <laughs> Did Bill cause that? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> Here's the black and red signature look. Here's uh, uh, a tape you're going to be watching. He looks like fucking Coolio. He looks like a Oh my god. Remember in Jurassic Park when Timmy gets shot and gets up and that's what it looks like? It looks like a punchline right now. Like the T Rex fence just turned on. I, I'm laughing so hard that my phone keeps falling over because I can't. I can't <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. He has someone on staff to make the hair look like that. Yeah, it was made to look like that. <laughs> He's like a fucking Muppet on map. I can't even look at him. <laughs> He's so fucking horrible. <laughs> All right, here we go. Oh, I'm sorry. Hold on. Oh, motherfucker. Doing a junket where I'm... Junket. Newspaper reporters, you know, you saw uh, I to O'Reilly. Leave me alone. It's fine. It's, 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 that's really the epitome of his fucking trick or treat hair. Seriously. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's, it's easy to understand why kids are always mesmerized and afraid of him, even when they see him. Because there's so much going on with that face and that look and that face. Yeah. Everything. Quote unquote, you guys, I am so fucking glad I did not watch this in advance. Like, yeah. seriously, oh my God. this is like the gift that keeps on giving. <laughs> fucking Christmas in August. Oh my God. It's just it's self explanatory. Watch it, and this is me talking to people. Are you taping this whole thing? Yes. Oh, you are. Oh my God, yes, thank God. When I signed with Satellite, even when I agreed to do it, I had no idea how alive I'd become. At first, I was like, okay, I signed this great deal, a lot of money, blah, blah. It sounds cool. Larry looks like he's about to pass All of out. Sudden, I'm coming out with ideas. <laughs> Larry's just staring. Larry has a lift that goes to directly to his neck. For the last ten years, and I realized I couldn't anything I wrote down. I couldn't have done. <laughs> Larry, special Ed Larry. Uh, even my guys who work with me said, "Gee, we just didn't think you like doing this stuff anymore." I said, "No, I love doing this." Look shit. at the shoulder pads the to make him look like a bigger guy. guy. I want to wait. Wait, wait, is this his office that they're in right now? I love it. You can't do that on terrestrial radio. It was funny. We're betting on how much this guy's bowel movement weighs. And that's what he keeps my bringing that up like. like it's the most they shocking like thing he's ever done, right? Spirit yeah, I think that he intentionally did bits that he knew would get bleeped to strengthen the case that the government's after me and you have to move to satellite radio in order to hear real radio. I mean, he knows that they're going to censor this stuff. Okay, just mm-hmm. so just to interject, our TV guy says, I know we recorded some of it, but I don't know who the hell got their hands on all that footage. But what right it's like... What happened to these bits? Like, what happened to this and that used to do? And I, and I write back, I go, I can't do them. And I was such an asshole. I thought Viacom and Clear Channel and companies like that were going to fight the FCC. I kept hanging around. Right. 
Yeah, and they right. never fought back. Yeah, they they never fought back. They paid millions of dollars in fines. Got the impulse of the religious so, right. Stop for a second. The, yeah. When <laughs> when they stopped uh, when when uh, they started really cracking down with this whole dead air Dave and everything like that. Only a couple months passed before Howard announced he was going to Syria. Right. So what, yeah. what were they supposed to do? A- and plus, they, they paid fight? all the fines. I mean, what else were they supposed to do? Lobby for for yeah. more and freedom of radio. Those six clear channel markets. Um, less Moonvest got you nine more. Right. This, this this made no sense. It was all about the marbles. Ever, ever, ever. That's all it was ever and about. Can you the balls he has to be trashing? CBS Viacom. Right I know. Now. Meanwhile, yeah. he spent another year and a couple of months promoting when they when they made him two hundred twenty million dollars. That's amazing. Exactly. Amazing. All right, can you go on? Yeah, sure. Anyway, FCC and Senator fucking asshole Stevens up in Alaska was building the bridge to nowhere, and right. he's, he's you know I mean what what is this? How many times have I heard Howard Stern you know get into fights with general managers, program directors? Now you're not going to have to do that. What's that oh, face? please. That's such a misconception. Okay. I've already had a million fights over. Oh, a new guy. Okay. Uh, everything from the equipment to the computer yeah. systems to. Um, this was definitely this, edited uh, by Howard TV because I was their signature. Right. Off. This is the yeah. press junkie. The, the concept being something I can't do in terrestrial radio. This guy eats so much food who's on our show. I said, how much would one of his bowel movements weigh? Oh, so we same thing over and over again. Amazing. The, the guy said you're not going to have and, uh, any arguments uh, with program directors and Howard. Oh, far from it. He doesn't have any arguments. No, no, he had arguments over equipment. And, and, yeah, Tim uh, never told him no. They said no. There's a board of health violation. So I start screaming and yelling. What are you talking about? I, my Howard 100 News team. Are we to believe that the entire reason he went to Sirius Satellite, made 220 million dollars in stock options, and then an additional 90 million dollars a year was because he couldn't weigh fucking high pitch Eric <laughs> shit? No, because no, he already made that decision <laughs> before we, <laughs> attempting to weigh. Look, if I can't weigh this retard shit, I might as well make 700 million a month. <laughs> So you decide. You could just ask him. You know, he didn't have to air it if he's dying to know. Goes and investigates, and they find out that the Board of Health has no such rules that this is a violation. Then I'm screaming at them, and it, I, I am always in, in an argument with someone. The Board of Health said always, you're not allowed to right. weigh. Weigh shit. Another person in your position having all this stress, like showbiz is a notorious you know, stress place of excess. <laughs> You don't seem, you know, to deal with your stress by drinking or doing drugs. Or no. Not even Rush Limbaugh's a junk. Yeah, right. That, that 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 that's great. There's nothing personal, nothing relatable to this conversation. It's the same conversation nope. with fifteen you know, no, different. That's what, what you just said is important because the media did not used to give him tea balls. They they used to press him. They used to be a little more contentious with him. He, he but all of a sudden, media. he became the and million dollar man. Yeah. Like he became and important. The people who were his fans grew up to start working in positions where they could return the favor, basically. Right. Yes. Hire him for TV shows, or they could interview him. They grew up a huge fan of his. Um, so I think this is a generational shift here where people are giving him T-balls now. Yeah, and don't think, by the way, Radio Gung fans, that we are not going to come back to that red list and uh, the guy who used to run TMZ because I got lots of scoop on him. It's, uh, it's very interesting. People are PMing me with why he's on the red list and why we can't talk about this former TMZ guy who has since passed away. So I, I've got some juice on that. So be ready for that. Not, not this time around, but in the very, very near future. On the and, you know, why are, <clears throat> it's always kind of strange that Howard and Rush are even compared and contrasted. Because they were very high-paid radio people, I mean, period. Right, but that's, that's where it, it ends. That's where, yeah, it ends. that's where it all ends. Yeah, exactly. They, they're, com- they're complete ends of the spectrum. You know, Rush yes. is a completely different animal. And Rush is actually a true talk show. You know, yeah, exactly. He didn't try to be funny. He wasn't trying to do anything outrageous. Although maybe he did with some of his commentary, but not in a way... That Howard Howard is a fucking jock, like, you know. Period. Yeah, exactly. He's the zookeeper. Howard wrote his coattails. By the way, he put out a book yep. that became huge smash success. Right. So that's why Howard jumped on the book bandwagon. A year later, he puts out a book. So in June is when Mel leaves. June of two thousand four. A month later, Howard holds that press conference saying uh, the government is after him. That George Bush is trying to silence him because mm. he's he's anti Bush. And that uh, satellite might be his next move. Yeah. And then, you know, two months later, two so, months later is when he announced and it. And did you know Mel Carmenzin got like over $200 million payout when he left Sirius? Yeah. Over $200 yeah, million. Yeah, he got a huge payout when he left Viacom, too. Huge. 
That man has so much fucking money. You know, it's so funny talking to him because, you know, you always think, oh, my God, he's just like me. He talks and he's got a dog, you know. But when he nope. actually tells you no. about. He's not like us. No, he's not. No, he ain't like But us. when he tells you about, like, you know, going to his house or something, he's taking a helicopter there. Or when he's going down to his place in Florida, you know, and I ask him, how does he take He the- takes a helicopter instead of an elevator he to takes- get to his apartment. Yeah, yeah he takes oh, a helicopter. Yeah. And then when he's going to Florida, you know, he takes his jet, his private jet. And so. That's the way he fucking rolls. He's not like anyone else. You know, it's it's amazing to me. And it's also yeah, amazing Mel, to me Mel that he is a, yeah. is a feared guy in the business. Oh, my too. God. He's, yes. He's a shark. Really? really. Yeah. yeah. And he, he and Don Buckwald are the two reasons the left and right hand puppeteers of Howard's success. Really? Who else do you know of who would make a contract with a new entity and get 10% of the total take of the fucking... The, in, in addition, in, in a, addition to his pay, not out of his pay. In you're talking about Buckwell now? Yeah. Buckwell, yeah. Yeah, Buckwell's always in addition to Howard. In, in addition, addition to. That's, you know, remember, when Howard signed up with Buckwell, they tell us in the history of Howard Stern, Howard didn't want to pay him until he started getting work. Right. And yeah. Buckwell goes, that's not how, that's it, not works. how it works. You right. pay me first. And, and then they I actually work. worked out a deal where Buckwell was going to get him work before getting paid. Um, wow. And, you know, he only signed with Buckwell because Ben Stern told him to. Yeah. And because Buckwell was a radio personality guy. Right. He that's didn't. Right. He, 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 I don't think he ever realized how he would, you know, hang his lucky star on fucking Howard. I don't think Buck no. Walt has listened to any Howard Stern broadcast that no. he wasn't on no. and attending live. No, I don't think. Oh, he absolutely. Cares. No, absolutely not. No, he doesn't care. He doesn't care. All right. Can we continue on? Sure. Yeah. Um, I- I'm a very disciplined person. I-, I did this interview with Bill O'Reilly yesterday. I went over to Fox News. You know, he started saying to me, uh, well, you know, you, you're a big Hollywood guy now. And you go to Nobu. You got a fancy house. And I'm looking at this guy. He's. He ain't making a living. I go, you don't have a nice house? And he goes, no. You know, he's trying to present right. himself as a man of the people. I go, yes, some man of the people. 50 pounds of fucking makeup. It looks like RuPaul. So um, I, I'm sitting there. Wow. And, 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 and it, it addresses this situation. This man with this the long wig on is talking about yes. somebody else looking like RuPaul? Dream. With the rose-colored, wow. with the tinted apply. glasses? I, I'm that nose. With the tinted Bono glasses that he's wearing this up, time. I go to work. I write all day. And I... You so don't write all day. That it's a little... And I'm in bed. Uh, what does she write? Book of ideas, babe. Know, Book of ideas. I don't know. I don't know how the hell to enjoy myself even. Have there ever been moments, you know, like you, you sort of walk right on the edge of anarchy on your show a lot Anarchy. Of times. Have there ever been moments anarchy. in the studio when you've been afraid, you know, that, that uh, for your own safety, I mean? Uh, the, the one time. Again, maybe yeah, Gary Busey. Busey. But, no, there's been a couple of times where people the guy tried to shoot him outside. A out of hand. No, the gun was in the car. Um, I didn't even Mr. try. Mr. T got heated up. I, I can think of that one time I was interviewing him, and uh, I was ask, I was trying to be provocative and ask him about uh, women and his relationship with his mother. And as soon as you mentioned the word mother, mother to him, it was like the Three Stooges, Niagara Falls. Slowly, <laughs> I turned. He, he was like. Mother, 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 motherfucker, I'm going to kick you out. You know, and, like, and I was like, wow, I think the guy's going to get up and beat the shit out of me. You know, I mean, he was real. he looked really angry. And uh, but I loved his exuberance. Uh, no, I, I, I don't think there were too many instances where I got nervous. Um, there were probably a couple. Sure. They, you know, Gary Busey and I once got into a fight in the studio. Right. It wasn't that one. But I, I, I don't know. I wasn't nervous for some reason. I wrestled him to the ground again. I pinned him. Come on, come on. Come on. Come on. I'm trying. You were just like a man. I waited. In your case, it seems to be going the opposite direction. No, it went the opposite way. And, And what happened was I was so successful at opening up the airwaves. And, you know, people have said to me the show was so successful on even opening up television. Once we syndicated what? to Los Angeles, there was this we we'll start to see more real television. And and today we have Wait, reality stop television. Oh, I, oh, 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 I'm sorry, show. what? I get up. He's claiming he invented reality television. Is this camera work? It was it shot on the, on the boat, uh, deck of a boat? Because I'm getting <laughs> nauseous watching it rocking back and forth. It's, like, it's horrible. I just don't believe that this rate that this television critic Here's Howard Stern and says, oh, now that he's in L.A., uh, reality television is going to be the next big thing. Nobody said Howard that. was doing bits. It was a lots, of, lots and lots of bits. 
And, you know, Jackie and Billy West are funny, but that's not reality television. No, of course not. Performing. It's always been him taking his show and putting it on air. So there's nothing there's nothing to that that is reality based. You no, know, he didn't invent having conversations. Right. And he, so him kind of claiming that he uh, he didn't want to be part of he didn't want to be playing the music or whatever. Then you wanted to be a talk radio host, but you didn't invent that. Nor were you a talk radio host really. You were like some weird hybrid that, you know, didn't have a point of view on anything, really. I mean, ma- you know, maybe it's actually morphed or bastardized now because he has no point of view on anything. But, Nothing. you know, back in the day, he would talk about, you know, things that affected him or that were going on in his life or whatever. But not not really, though, you know. Yeah, most of his point of view <clears throat> were informed by Ben Stern. You'd hear Ben Stern calling because Howard would uh, say, true, you know, yeah. my, my father wants to say something. I mean, he's upset about something he read or whatever. Or when Howard would give his opinion, Ben would call and say, you're absolutely right. It's because you're right. repeating what Ben said right. already. That's why he's absolutely right. i down there and talk about my sex life. i talk about uh, what was bothering me. I'd wish death on people. People are so shocked by that. <laughs> They're taking the revolution thing even further and making it look like Che Guevara now. Che Guevara. He's, he's, he's Gay Guevara. <laughs> She's perfectly moving those little hairs out of his face. The tendrils. It's all about the tendrils. Have we ever seen these photos? It looks like he's on the Rhythm Nation tour. (laughs) (laughs) I gotta gotta go back just a little bit, okay? I'm sorry. Where are these photos used? I know it's photo, photo. Oh, wait, look oh, at this. Oh, look, look at this. Look at this bucket. Oh, my gosh. Look at this bucket. Oh, what the fuck is that? It's like a planner turned upside down. I don't think I've seen a bucket hat go that low. That's the bucket hat phase. Yeah, she, she still wears those, actually. Except on Fat Albert. <laughs> Oh my god, I fast forwarded. Oh wait, 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 I'm so sorry. You gotta go back, go back, go back, go back, go back, a little more, a little more. Boys, that is. Oh, and here's the Sirius S50. Oh, look, plugging. Great piece of equipment. You gonna hold on to this for me? Yeah. She looks like Jimmy J. Jimmy J. Walker with that thing on. Oh, I'm crying, you guys. Hey, Jimmy J. Walker. Oh, yeah. Is this the uh, last of a dying breed? A big frog. I'm Beth. I'm Howard's girlfriend. Okay. So nice to meet you. I'm such a <laughs> never enough kisses. Never You're enough so love. beautiful, oh. and I can't wait to read I'm your also book. And I followed your whole career, oh. and, and I never so mentioned that once. To meet you. Thank you. To all Even more beautiful in person. Oh goodness, so. not at all. Best of luck with she everything. She never says it back so to her though. Very sweet. Okay. <laughs> and you're doing wonderful things as well. So thank I you. hope that all goes the way as you want. And yes, thank and you. All the, all the you know goals the head that you achieve that you cover. Thank you. Thank you. Mm-hmm. If I can help out with anything, please let me know as well. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Yes. What do you know about how? Nothing. What I know? <laughs> well, a <laughs> um, couple of things. <laughs> Which ones? You do? Was this when she wrote, wasn't she stuck in the tsunami? Didn't she write a book about that? Didn't she lose her boyfriend in the tsunami? This is oh right, uh, that. Oh my god, it was a horrible, horrible story. Yeah, she was like attached to a tree or something. She was, she was hanging, hanging on to a tree. tree. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And you would think for a second that Beth would say, "Oh my god, just right." Wait, wait, Beefus actually think about a human no. in emotion. No. Right. What's Beth gonna say though? Don't you hate balloons in the ocean? <laughs> Oh my god, you survived the tsunami. I released a seagull. <laughs> my husband thanked a seal that I thought that he photographed. My husband wouldn't jump in a pool to save our drowning dolphin. <laughs> you survived the tsunami? Your husband, your, your boyfriend helped you up a tree? <laughs> he died. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Oh, I mean, <laughs> no. Well, um, 
but just recently, I think it was the first time when he show uh, his uh, eyes on the, on the TV, which he take off his glasses and he has a Did beautiful you give eyes. Motion right. <laughs> 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 it's what many people say. <laughs> so, an epileptic love. seizure from the flesh. Yeah. Lots of love. Okay. All the best. Oh my God, you're the hottest. Hot. You are the hottest. I look like the best damn sports show. Petra gave okay. us a book. I just heard. I okay. miss Petra. I got to meet her. She's a great athlete. She hung up with me. Wait, she said she's a great athlete. She hung in that tree. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> In that tree. <laughs> Did you share right where it is because it's spiked from the lighting? How obnoxious that hoodie. Yeah. Please welcome Howard Stern! Oh, yeah, I remember this. Fighting the How are you? To be there in the studio with you. I wish I could be running my fingers through Tom Arnold's hair, but <laughs> what, what can I say? Oh, oh. Howard, God. First of all, now I've been on your show uh, probably gross. 20 times over the years. Had a great time. Right. Uh, you, uh, the only reason you're on this show today, the only reason at all is because you've got something huge to promote. Because I don't even think you know the name of this show. <laughs> what is the name of this show that you're on right now? Something about damn show. I don't know what it is. The damn show. <laughs> what made you decide to leave radio and, and push you over to Sirius? The thing that pushed me is, quite frankly, censorship. My radio show had the gone downhill shit. because of the censorship. Oh, money. I found myself uh, cutting myself off. In fact, you guys can probably be a little more risque than I can. And here I am, the guy who set the world on fire, saying anything that came into my mind. And suddenly, whatever I said had to be censored and edited. I was this outrageous, wild disc jockey full of ideas and great concepts so and every, everyone to come to serious with me. And now, now, I can't Howard, even see now Howard, I, uh, I had the privilege to go up to the uh, serious building uh, last week when I was in New York, and it is the weirdest thing. As you walk down the hall, you look in one room, and you got Earth, Wind, and Fire, yep. and then you look at another room, there's a conservative guy, and then you got your sports guys, and then you got, I mean, there is so much, uh, you know, alternative music people are in there playing. It's like, it's probably like the old days in New York when Carol King and all those great writers lived in the same building. I was, in, I was at work in an MTV in the early days, but people have said to me, being up at Sirius is like being at MTV the early days. is a real buzz. Now when you come on to Sirius and you're, you know, you're, you're part of that universe, it's a tremendous energy. It's really, it's really great. And I tell you something, I feel revitalized. I feel like this is the beginning of my career all over again. And I am going to get to do whatever I damn well please. And I invite you guys to come down there, put you in the robo spanker and have my way with you. Why do you think... Mm -hmm. That if people tell you things, they won't tell anybody else. Wow. I think two reasons. I think that the show is very relaxed and that you kind of forget that there's a microphone there. And secondly, I think because I'm so open on the air. I mean, I'll blurt out anything. I'll say anything that's on my mind, whether it's politically incorrect or not. <laughs> Except that Alice's kind name. of steps it up. When people come on and they know of my reputation, they feel they have to sort of match what it is we're doing. And I think they get into this revelation kind of thing where they're ready to open up and reveal because if the host is you know willing to reveal i think that's why tom arnold's such a good interviewer i mean the guy's revealed everything I mean this is the only show that's allowing him to use their footage so uh, o'reilly didn't give him the footage and letterman didn't give him the footage. well i mean it's the best damn sports show i mean you, you know i'm still confused about where this actually was i mean if the tv guy says well, was, i don't know was, anything about this this was original content for his howard tv channel which when it started it needed original content right badly in exactly. demand <laughs> It looked like my Cocktober uh, crap. Oh, stop, 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 stop. Oh, my God. It's Ralph. What is that? The guy with the hair? All right. So oh, wait, where are we Ralph? now? Yeah, that's Ralph. That's Ralph. Yeah. Of course. Ralph yeah. follow him wherever he goes. <laughs> oh, my God. some <laughs> shit. He's his fucking Kato Kalen. He's, he's everywhere. <laughs> All right, let's go. Who gets a, right. a flesh-colored beanie? It's like he's uh, the cone heads. Oh my god! Look at that hair! 
you do too. I don't know what I'm doing. You tell me what I'm doing. You're uh, talking to Vanessa Manillo, ET. Okay, that sounds good. I'm going to talk to Vanessa, and see what she has to say. Have you ever seen him work so hard? No. Aside no. from when he was from, uh, aside okay. from okay. private parts. No, never. When he was going uh, on the you know, Wheel of Fortune. Nice, nice to meet you. you. How are you? Goodness, good to I'm see good. you. Yes, it is true. You are taller. I'm a tall man. <laughs> Hey, hey. Well, this is exciting. She doesn't need to get dialed up. Whatever you guys do. Tony! Yeah, I'll see the tour. I'm going to give you the big tour. Not the 500 million tour. Oh, okay. Wait, he's at Sirius now? Yeah. But I don't think he's working there yet. No. He's still right. in between, I think. Trying to kiss me, and I'm kissing him <laughs> through the glass. It's like the bubble boy. And it was Tony Orlando from Tony Orlando and Dawn, and he came into the hall and he started singing um, "Knock Three Times," and I started dancing with Katie and turning her around. You should only know that he would never talk to anybody to ever again there. in those f***ing hallways. And then we walked mm -hmm. uh, another couple of. You know, oh, he's got a little belly. It's just, it's just really part of, cool, part of know, the black and red revolution. That's where he's, car that's where he's carrying. He's appendix carrying. <laughs> All right, so here's the studio. This Robin sits in here, and that's Robin's newsroom back there. So the studio is still under construction. Is, uh, yeah, it's, okay, this, this is the fall. Wow. This is what I work. Wow. Wow. All the monitors. Seven, eight monitors. Yeah, but I, but I need a lot of monitors. As we write, we write. Those who came on the scene, it was refreshing. It was never heard before for someone to speak like they do in real life. Oprah gets away with more that, stuff that, that than is I do. Such well, Oprah's doing a show the other day on women shaving their private parts. And I'm going, that's the stuff I'm getting fined for. Oprah's edgier than my show, and I can't live with that no, anymore. Yeah, does, does Entertainment Tonight do any shows on shaving? Or is that just Oprah? This might me? be our first. This is the first. Yes. <laughs> She's so bewildered. Everyone's got to give him a courtesy yeah. laugh as this 50-something-year-old you know, man talks about shaving. Because he's supposed to be funny. Ergo, you're supposed to laugh. Well, I, I don't really have a, a... Just like going to a restaurant that's supposed to be amazing and the food is delicious, even though it's kind of shit. I doubt she would come on. But you see, you would be an excellent guest. For example, if you were on... I would I'd never have her on. He, she, would, she wouldn't even make it to the wrap-up show today. Okay. Uh, that would be one. One. Secondly, like all hot chick stuff, we'd like to know when you lost your virginity. <laughs> My audience needs to know. They want to know if you're shaven. They want to know uh, what you wear when you go to bed with a man. Mm -hmm. uh, there'd be a lot of. Have you ever been with another woman? Mm -hmm. Have you kissed a girl? I know all these. He never asks those well, questions anymore. Let's go. I, I, I we'll don't think I'm ready for your show. You're yet. probably ready. I need you're to just, peak first. You're you're playing like a fine wine. <laughs> you're pretending to be this Entertainment Tonight reporter, but you really not you're, pretending. You're I do on MTV, MTV and ET. I do both. There's no pretending here. But to see is what you get. It was a pleasure meeting you. Pleasure and, meeting uh, you. Well, Entertainment Tonight did not give him the footage kids. we see. Next, next time you will uh, come on my show. Yes, and it'll we'll get be to different. the bottom of your relationship. <laughs> we'll get to the bottom of a whole lot else, I'm sure. sure. Very nice. Yeah. No. Look at that. <laughs> I take it for serious. Yeah, of course. I owe him this one. That's why he rang the bell for NASDAQ. Why wasn't uh, Beth one of those? Who is that guy? Maybe this is uh, yeah, a. Yeah, this is a SEAL team. team. I didn't know it was a yeah, 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 no, no. Oh, oh, he looks so Christ. skinny in there. What, what is Hello. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. But a Wall Street. <laughs> I mean, like he was trying to do the serious oh, revolution yeah, colors, burgundy and black. Oh, look, it's Zoss Rapin. Shows you how loud about finance. Zoss Rapin. How am I feeling today? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I thought I was going to Wall Street. There's Tim. Oh, wait, is this where he does the uh, stock thing? Yeah, yeah, the opening of the NASDAQ. Yeah. This is a, uh, so you got Lisa G, Tim, Gary. Who does it? I'm not a fan of the black gloves or anything. I don't know about. Like, where's what, the explain big it to me, Gary. I told somebody that I was going to, you know, to do this, and I was real excited because I thought what was going on was Ralph. what you said. You and, they go, and they go, oh, you know, this is the New York Stock Exchange. This is the NASDAQ. And as if it were some sort of lower thing that I felt really bad. I don't know what that means. Yeah, this feels uh, very scrub like. <laughs> we're so like low life because we're at NASDAQ. Uh, but you look good. Know? You look very nice. Lisa, today. you want it so bad for me. I mean, every minute I sound sexy. Well, this is an employee. Yeah, how do you ring the bell? <laughs> how do you ring the bell? Um, I have no idea. I'm so anxious to get out of here. You want me to go on with you? Yeah. Well, yeah. Come on. 
I was being sarcastic. I think you actually look at that outfit, the gloves, wow. the overcoat. I'm, I'm put together. It looks like Rhea Perlman is standing on Danny DeVito's shoulders right now. <laughs> He didn't even bother to take his fucking jacket off. Like, can we just discuss this for a second? He's got his <laughs> gloves on. Like, it's what part of his look. Indoors. <laughs> Holy shit. All right, let's hear about the stock. Because he yeah, knows go back nothing. about 10 he, seconds. He clearly knows nothing about NASDAQ, right? So we don't know what's Even though that's where Sirius is listed. Hi, Rick. Happy New Year to you. I'm joined by Howard Stern, who will be opening the NASDAQ today. You know, there's an analyst on the street, South Roger. He set a $600 price target on Google. Do you invest at all? Do you buy stock? I know nothing about why I'm here today. I thought I was going to a place that had, like, lots of people and, and you know, the, the, you see guys oh, right, running right. around. What on did a... they do? No, wait a they second. They lost us. You, you oh, see... come on. What is this? Guys. All right, we uh, apologize for the yeah. audio problem, and we promise, well, actually, I'm in no position to promise this, but I'm fairly sure that it was a technical glitch not connected to the fact Howard Stern started talking. Somebody might think, Maybe. you know. Wow. That isn't what happened. Did I say something wrong? I bet you they think I'm going to say something dirty. I bet you if I walk away, I'll walk away. They'll put it back up on the line. Wait, go. Watch. Watch. Right. We got to make that point. I didn't say anything, man. Did I? Guys, we're using the law. We're using this. I just don't look. Right. I don't look like I belong on television. What a, yeah, no what, a, what a racket he's got. Right. Where he's the guy who says bad things. Right. He's that's his whole thing. Oh, I say bad things. Wow. Well, this is a lot like radio. All right, let's get back to Bertha Coons. All right. Anthony Nasdaq with a yeah, guy who can be pretty interesting sometimes. He can be very sometimes. interesting. Howard Stern, oh. switching over to Sirius. We're back live. We were worried that they were already unplugging it. Well, you know, I'm a paranoid guy. I've been censored by the government. I have a feeling the brass at CNBC saw me with you standing here. I feel like every the courtesy laughing is actually cringeworthy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, another thing, too. He's never been censored by the government. No. His nope. employers bleep him so that they don't get fined by the government. But right. the government is not censoring him. No. 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 He knows the rules of radio. He's not being censored. He knows exactly what he can and cannot say. And because he pushed the envelope, it, it required that the radio station censor him. Not that anybody else was doing that to him. And the, and the uh, radio station, they had a zero tolerance thing. They went... They they had no patience for anything. They were, were not going to try anything. So they right. they were heavy handed with the dump button. But that's not the government censoring you. No. And, you know when you listen to a, a rap song where it's got for the radio and they they bleep a word or something so that it can be played on yeah. the radio. They don't walk around going, "I've been censored by the government." <laughs> that's what Howard does though. I've been censored by the government. I was pleased. This was pornographic, even though we did nothing wrong, and they just pulled the plug on us. That's what I think just happened. Now, you know, they're paying you buckets of money. Mel is, is throwing money at you to do good things for Sirius. What are you doing with that money? Where are you putting it? What am I doing with the money? First of all, I just want to go on with my point. I don't know what I'm doing here. What is this place? Where are all the thousands Look at him of people yeah. around, around money. on the floor? Wow. And they buy and sell and they throw... Uh, what? I don't, that's where I thought I was going. I don't this even know... This is the electronic marketplace. I am so financially inept that uh -huh. I didn't even know that there was a difference. I just thought it was thousands of guys running around. And I don't wow. know what any of this means. Uh, Sirius Satellite up 1.5%, which is good. Which is good. <laughs> there it is. That's my analysis. So where do you see the stock at the end of the year after you being on? I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you something. At the end of the year, this stock should be floating about ten to fifteen dollars a share. You think? Yes, I absolutely Pump and dump. And that's after lots of analysis. Do we know what the actual you're asking? stock value was at the end of 2006? Like, look, we can find out. Howard Stern, who is the no, really. When you, when you see him dodge and weave. But how did, when you see him dodge and weave, and now that we know he's got a 99 IQ, don't you wonder how did we not know he had a 99 IQ? As we watch him talk. Because you know what? Deep down inside, we always knew he had a 99 IQ. You know I what? did not know that. I really oh, I, I think know, so. I have to be honest. I didn't realize until signing up to Stern Fan Network back in 2010 is when I first started really using it, or 2009. I didn't realize just how much of Howard's material was written for him to say. Right. 
Like, so I didn't when you even see realize this, that Jackie did so much of it. When you see 40 some odd minutes of him sort of off the cuff and, you know, trying to ad lib, you yeah. see how pathetically inadequate he is on his own. He has like two or three go to's, and that's pretty much it. Right, so to, yeah. to put the punctuation on the serious stock thing, by the end of 2006, it's under $4 a share. Right. <laughs> Even though I was a super fan of the show, really a super fan, I wasn't taping it every day and listening to every second that I missed. Or, I was. I, yeah, so I wasn't at that level. I was a huge fan, and I would stay in my car like everybody. But I did not realize how much of him was puffed up by his contributors. When you see him on a live thing, you always cringe and go, ooh, that's not the guy who I know and like. But you realize that's because he's separated from everything that makes him the guy you know. Exactly. Mm -hmm. He didn't have Jackie there. He doesn't have Artie here. You know, so he doesn't have the things that he can lay off on to make jokes. I, I, I raised this point online that if you remove the laughter that follows everything he says from the studio, would you... You, what you would find is there's no, you're not going to provide the laughter when no. you hear it. No. You laugh along like you yawn when someone else, is, when someone else yawns next to you. Jackie's oh. laugh was a cue to laugh. I think we're painting this a little too harsh. There was actually funny moments back then. Right. Now, it wasn't just la uh, Jackie's laugh making you laugh. There was actually stuff that was funny that, of course, Jackie... That, wait, or, that, Howard, that Howard thought of? And Howard oh, no, 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 no. no. But, but Howard, most of it was interactional. It was mostly interactional. Yeah. You know, yeah. my, my favorite moments ever on that show were when he got into fights with Gary or with Stuttering John or, you know, and how Stuttering John couldn't get the words out, could not articulate a rebuttal to what would how, Howard was saying to him and then Jackie would be laughing hysterically in the background about it. And you know, and you, you always felt that it was so real. And I do, at some, to some extent, think that it was. You know, the, the uh, being irate maybe was manufactured, but the responses and the way people responded back to him were not. I think today's show, you know, where everything is manufactured and everything oh, yeah. is just kind of feeding into his ego and what it is that he wants to hear is a completely different show. But oh, yeah. he, he's trying to regain that. He's trying to, to get back to what it used to be, but you can't go home again. None of it is funny. You know, no. you know, you know, when I started reading private parts, actually, the summer I started listening to Howard is the summer I read private parts, probably advanced further as a reader of his than as a listener of his. I actually had it in my mind that Howard had a comic timing all his own, that he would be thinking about something for a little while and then comment on it, even as everyone else had passed. I just thought that that's how his mind worked. And I now realize no, no, that note was written for him. That's right. And then it was handed to him. And then he looked and, at it. Right. And then he read it. Right. And, it's and, not his mind. Right. And then the e-show is what actually lifted the curtain. Right. That although was they, truly, yeah. yeah. Although the e-show, I don't know that they did the note yes. passing as often. Yes, they did. To at first. But they, they stopped at it after a while, if you because, recall. Yeah, because he realized that it made him look stupid because everybody and it made knew Jackie that Jackie look was writing the jokes. Exactly. Same thing that they do with Fred, though, now. I mean, you know, Fred's behind a fucking wall. He's basically been <laughs> yeah. marginalized. I go as far as to say that I was at first in denial that Jackie gave Howard so much of his comedy. You didn't realize it, that, right? I, I really thought that, oh. no. I mean, it's just, it. Oh. I didn't notice. I didn't notice the transition in Howard's jokes when it went from Jackie to Benji. No, as, but what you didn't realize oh, you is, that be, Fred, oh, wow. is that Fred used to try and be like mm -hmm. joke guy, and he failed miserably at it. Yeah, awful. Yeah, Fred was not the guy, even though he tried to be. He wanted to be so badly. Neither of them were comedy guys until Jackie no. showed them how to be comedy guys. That's right. Okay, so we've established he's not a comedian. He's just a guy on the radio who got really fucking lucky because mm -hmm. he surrounded him by good, with good people. End of story. Yeah. Anyway, and a super agent. All right, let's move on. Probably going to be trading about $200 a share. That's what Mel is. <laughs> and that's why they just locked uh, Mel up in the straight jacket. A lot of people sort of go with oh, your mojo because you don't have that, you know, SEC on your back. Uh, do you worry that you might lose a little of your edge now that you're kind of unplugged and can say anything? Baby, look at me. Did I lose my mojo? Come on. You know you want me right now, don't you? <laughs> What is this, CNBC? Oh. Uh, no, I am not concerned that I'm going to lose my mojo. I have been in radio for, I think, 25 years. And since the day I got on yeah. the radio, everyone has said to me, you're going to fail. 
And everyone said from year to year, the audience has had enough of him. He's a one-trick uh, pony, that kind of thing. <laughs> I will go on Sirius Satellite Radio. Why she doesn't know? What doing already is going to blow up the airwaves. This is a whole new era. Satellite radio is so superior in terms of its music, its sound, its, its content. What does this have to do with your edge? You will never Nothing. go back yeah. to listening to FM radio. I promise you that. Just get wow. a subscription to Sirius, and you will never go back to listening to FM radio again. It's just the difference between night and day. Now, give me a kiss, for Christ's sake, and what are we doing? <laughs> the thing, he asked for it as a woman, but All right, baby. We're on Sirius radio yeah. as well. You're on Sirius radio? We are right now. Oh. So. Yeah. Here you go. Okay. No. Back to you, downtown. He might be in trouble right there. Cheesiest fucking video. This is like a bad porn from 1974. <laughs> like, scene, I'm expecting full long. bush. I'm expecting like like some horrible overdyed <laughs> peroxide blonde <laughs> bitch with full bush and like double D <laughs> saggy tits right now. Where's, where's, where's the pizza boy? And then the shit music that's in between. And it's just, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. I, I love it. Okay. One reason for the excitement. Oh, we're still on NASDAQ? Jesus. Yeah. He hasn't rang the bell yet. And that one person is Howard Stern. Oh, Bennett. Yeah. Look how he always smiles at himself when he tries to be funny. He's so proud. And the, the hey now is kind of like, you know. You know, he doesn't have any other words to put in Right. Or after Stern. And that was. Say it, Bob. Come on, baby. It is my great pleasure to open the first trading day of 2006. Radio, and I First trading day of 2006. Okay, so now we know. I got a telephone call tell you something before Mel speaks. I have never seen such exciting television in my Mel is tinier life. than me, by the way. How is it that I have missed this show? Doesn't Mel look like I'm Mel busy watching Mary? Regis. I am so stupid. <laughs> I think he looks like Gary with a white hair. He's trying to be Gary's father. You sound like you're making love yeah. to these stocks, Bob. Is he married? And Natalie Wood, you are dynamic. The way you speak about these stocks. This is like a big telethon. It's a big toe board. I see the stock is at 680. Can we see 681? 682. Gather right. around this stock. Even Shuley. Even Shuley's not that bad. <laughs> and then we're wow. Let's go. Uh, I have been uh, up to uh, the he, studios of he's got the, um, working for the last couple of weeks. The drive of a Robin Williams without any of them is here right now. No. Just, <laughs> just keep going and going. Go. Go. Like he's about to do a black impression. He's about shows. to do just anything. But this is remarkable. And I will say this. If you go and listen to this product, you listen to Sirius Satellite Radio, you will never listen to traditional radio again. It's so unbelievable that he was able to do this. Way. I really, I'm just blown channel. away. Yeah, CBS really is fun. so fucking Everything stupid for keeping him on air. The they probably had to pay and him really if they fired him. Well, at this point, he's no longer with satellite radio. radio. Oh, this yeah. is yeah. January yeah. 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 They didn't include the last of a dying service. breed at all. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I am uh, thrilled to be here, and I must admit to you, I don't even know where I am right now. I was pretty sure that there were thousands of screens. Didn't you say this already? Have pieces of yeah, paper yeah. in their hands. And well, that's around, conversation. That kind of stuff. But I, well, what do I know? You don't beat I just know that. radio. And I don't know anything about financial markets, but radio <laughs> I do know. And Sirius Satellite Radio is the future. No one's and, laughing. Uh, They've sure heard it so party. much. So what are we doing? Come on. Let's go. Can I get to a second? The problem is that they gave him a courtesy, courtesy laugh. I'm going to keep doing it then. Yeah, but we as listeners had been hearing this for over a year by now. So yeah. just like with private parts, just like with everything else, it was like, oh, my God, en just like AGT. It was like enough already. Like we were so sick of it at this point. You know, nobody it sounds wanted to like it. He, he inserted himself like Mel was supposed to talk. And he goes, no, wait, yeah, I right. had gold with that. Coming whole, gold. Uh, right. I thought there'd be a thousand guys here. Right. I the, say tote board, wow. the tote board, like muscular dystrophy. That was like his yeah. one genius thing that he said. Hey, look who's back. It's Bob. I'm back. Come on, Bob. Wait, wait. Oh, step over here, Bob. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Come on, Mel. 
Hey, it's a three-way. Well, <laughs> trying not to be Howard. Uh, the one thing I do want to say, Howard, our market is an electronic market, and we're like satellite radio. We are the future. All right? You got that, Howard? I hear you, baby. Okay. Come I'd on. I'd like to present to you this crystal in honor of the first trading day, welcoming you to the With the leather gloves, I can't even take radio. it. Congratulations, Howard. Oh, thank you. This is not a movie. <laughs> wow! You don't just end a movie because you ran out of. <laughs> wow! Is that really the end? But I mean, did the guy maybe miss some of the end when he uploaded it? So how oh stopped? Oh my god! Wow. Howard stopped addressing the camera as he did in the opening scene very early on. Then it was just uh, you. You're you're a fly on the wall, basically. Holy the the, the shit. documentary style changed. And then wow. Richard Christie operating as uh, sort of like an interviewer for some of it was just such a mess. The ending, though, that ending just that that is the worst ending. The only the comparison ending. I can think of is the Blair Witch Project, <laughs> <laughs> where you just go, "What?" <laughs> Standing in the corner. <laughs> that was one of the worst things I've ever ever witnessed. I would never have watched that if. Or, would you watch that and go, "I got to sign up for this"? <laughs> <God>. <laughs> I mean, Holy that actually shit. makes the ending, the private parts, seem sane. Holy shit, you, know, you guys. Notice he doesn't go into any details of what he's going Nothing. to do on series. Nothing. You know, like, no, no, zero detail, except he's going to be dirty. Although he mentions tissue time. Yeah, I know. No, I always hated that I would defend Howard as a guy who was... He had observational humor, I thought, and that his... And as, as I said, I thought he had his own timing. And I realized later that that's because he was being handed something and reading it. So right. his timing was off. But I would defend him as being a little bit more intellectual than the people who would dismiss him as crass and stuff. And then I would go and watch him do these interviews or public appearances and go, Jesus, that's what I keep telling people you're not. He's you the luckiest, luckiest man in radio. Think about yes. it. He's not even funny. And yet he goes, I know what I'll do. I'll go into comedy. Yeah. Uh, who's going to write for me? Who's going to tell me what to say? God. I do want to hear this, though. Howard in Basic Studies? All That's right. it. Fabulous. Let's listen to this because why not? Well, we don't know he's on heroin. He could be Come sick. Come on, Robin. You guys are smart. Neither of you are smart. Well, then call me dumb because I think he's no, sick. No way. Howard, you're not dumb. You went to BU. You're a smart man. To BU. <laughs> There's yeah, the, credentials. You went all the geniuses into BU. <laughs> you know that I went to BU, but I went to retard BU? Like, like I didn't even go to the it real BU. It wasn't even BU. the real college? Yeah, there's a uh, college at Boston University for idiots. It's the milk parents who can't normally get their kids into the school. Right. Yeah, I was a real idiot. Oh. And um, BU has a program called, it's like the Special Olympics. It was called... Basic studies. It doesn't get embarrassing than that. Like when you're trying to pick up a chick at BU and you tell her you're in basic studies, you're like, fucking loser. Yeah. Get the, they head for the hills. <laughs> and basic studies, the deal was, even though you're a shit student, you can't even score above a 1,000 on your SATs, we're going to let you into BU, let your old man pay the freight, and uh, you got to, for two years, take everything you were supposed to take in high school, but you fucked up. So you're really this, in this high school. All, I'm in high school. Accurate. I was in high school for two more years. <laughs> Believe me, this was no college. I was studying, like, high school chemistry, <laughs> you know, humanities, which was actually watching movies. Oh my and uh, it was like retard school. And then if you pass retard school, they'd let you for the next two years get into, uh, you know, like the school of communications, where I studied wow. radio. <laughs> so wow. fucking radio. I'm sure my old man was having a conniption. cost him, like, five grand a year at the time, which Ooh. was a lot of money for my he father. He might be way off on that number, too. You know, but, uh, you know, I, so think it was more. I didn't even go, like... People say I went to BU. That's bullshit. I should have been in Nassau community. I got in on a fluke. BU. Oh, it's like I'm an idiot. Work. I don't even know how I passed basic studies. I remember studying, and then like they I'm give a sure test, I didn't know one answer, and somehow I passed. Oh, Everyone must have been a moron, Were too. you doing the Abacab thing? Uh, I don't already know. described. No, I wasn't that bad, but just about. I didn't even have enough brains to do Abacab. <laughs> A-B-A-C. Wow. And I also would not be surprised if Allison was helping him. Of course. Right. Well, what about Dr. Lou? And Dr. Lou, all you know, yeah. everyone was smarter than him. Wow. 
I just got a tutor for calligraphy and tutor for photography. painting, photography. photography. Well, wow. look no further than his hair and clothing. That's what he chooses <laughs> to pay for. Because I could never come up with this on my own. Wait, what about when you see him, when you just see, you know, the, the, the scrubby hairless legs that are his who have left ca- less calf muscle than, than Beth does. And all he's wearing is like these old man fucking Wait. paper slippers with like a robe. <laughs> it's <laughs> the, like, uh, it's, it's like his whole carriage turns into a pumpkin when he goes home because he's just there's no Sean there's it's all Sean John and yeah. these brown moccasins that he puts on when he takes actually takes off his boots he's like what? He's been out of production for 14 and that, years and Beth has her Glombox Kimmel I, t-shirt on skeleton yes. his clothing doesn't reflect just him. like his penthouse is literally a formica dream they have not changed that place since he moved in there's never been a renovation there you know, even Girl Town is all like Formica closeting mm-hmm. and, you know, those jacquard kind of high low woven rugs and, you know, it's all white. You know, it's just like such shithole. And you know her fucking room is pink and has fucking stuffed animals <laughs> on the bed. Oh, you, just know you know that the, that the clothing at least costs money. Why? Because you, you know you're able to go and yeah. find the Mr. Porter stuff. Oh, that's true. Well, and her yeah. clothing is very expensive. And, you know, uh, yep. she, she has a huge budget. You know, I don't care yeah. what Monsoon used to say about her, you know, having secondhand stuff. She she buys all of that as soon as it comes online. As soon as it is out, she is buying and it. And how do they have it, though, in gigantosaur size? I mean, that's <laughs> really totally But she's not, that. she's really not that big. I mean, you know, at best, if she's on the biggest side, she's a size 8. But she's gotten really skinny. Like, she is... It's skinny from the waist up. It still has linebacker thighs well, she, and ass. She I is, mean, she is big but, boned, but she is skinny. I mean, she's got Skeletor kind of like clavicles, yeah. you oh, know. The top she, side, absolutely. She's got it a, sick. She's concave. Um, <laughs> she might be off the rack and probably is, but Howard's Varvado stuff is not off the rack. Oh, it's all there's an article made. you can Google that he was spending, I think it was 2000 individual pieces that were for him each season, something Correct. like that? Correct. They custom make it for him. So what they would do Yes, they do th- make things in China, but they also make uh, 807, so down south, South America. So they're able to do his sizing. They fit him. And then when they're doing a run of sizes, the pattern maker will make a special pattern for his size. But everything looks so ill-fitting on him. The shirts well, are mean, too long. You try to, can you design for a bag of bones? No. I mean, seriously, there's not any, there's no shape to his body except, like, you know, tree i mean yeah. it literally looks like a gnarled tree yeah when, but when even in, even when he tries to wear like those uh, horrific three-piece suits that he has done in the past no they're yeah. still very very ill-fitting to me like yeah, the cuffs go to his knuckles yeah he could look shirt. so much better he could look so much better if he tried he's shaped like a comma i mean <laughs> <laughs> he really is like mr burns if you were to put yes. him, the, oh. the, just go stew yeah. here on Mr. Burns. All right, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna wrap up this shit show. John, we miss you terribly. I'm so sorry that you couldn't make it for this show, but you know what? This was lots of fun. Uh, just abruptly in it like that, like that video. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. it just cut to black. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. <laughs> Thanks for hanging with us. Please join us for any discussion at RadioGunk.com in the forum section. Follow us on Instagram or Twitter at Radio Gunk. And don't forget to like this and subscribe to us and hit that little bell so that you know when we're going to have a new show. Thanks.